everybody, this is Beth McCullough. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Des Moines, Iowa, and I do live videos every Tuesday night with my sweet husband, Steve. Hi, everybody. I can see already the gang is all here. You guys, we love you. It's so nice. You get on before we do and start chatting with each other. How fun is that? Yeah, and we got Holly from Sioux Falls. I heard a rumor that is snowing in Sioux Falls oh, no. and like whiteout conditions so it was 70 degrees here yesterday and it was really nice this morning and the temperature plummeted all day the winds are howling so it's winter we went from summer to winter what's yeah, it like where 75 you're at? degrees down to like seven degrees wind chill and then on thursday afternoon. it's going back up again hey becky and jean and janice holly karen patty who else is on karen i missed some at the top Thank you so much for joining us. So I'm going to show you what we're making tonight. And I've got to tell you, I'm like a kid waiting for Christmas. I dreamt up the idea for a Stamping Joy Club community four years ago during COVID. And I've thought about it ever since. And just, I really, to tell you my heart, I want a place for people to meet and gather ideas and learn things and Steve is laughing at me and we were um, gonna wait until the middle of the broadcast to talk okay, about this. Okay, so she I'm can't not gonna talk herself. about it. I'm not gonna talk about it. She cannot anyway, help herself. If you're on my email list, I sent you an email and it has the link to join. And you guys, this isn't on Facebook. This is a real thing with a phone app and its own what do you call it? Its own <laughs> network community. We paid real money to make it nice. We don't want the Facebook algorithm hiding things from you and having people argue with each other. That is not where we want to be, is it, Steve? No. So Becky is report or Bev is reporting that she hears a big echo on the audio. And I've looked at everything here and I can't see where it would be coming from. Can, Can anyone else hear that? Yeah. Please let me know in the chat. Okay, we're gonna make this rocker card tonight with the detailed dogwood set. You know, celebration only lasts a couple more days till Thursday. You can still get this with a $100 order, but you can also make this rocker card with whatever stamp sets you have. Um, I, I wanted to show you, I have a bunch of cards made up that never got on my blog and never got shown. This is the same fun fold that we did with the hot air balloon. Isn't that pretty? There's nothing inside. Well, a double layer, but um, another pretty card. And this is a book fold. And instead of going the traditional way, it's like a vertical book fold. Really, really pretty. I love the circle background. It's a deckled circle. I don't know if you can see that. And look inside. It's pretty gorgeous. So these are just some other cards using the detailed dogwood. So I would encourage you to get that if you don't have it yet. Okay. Oh, one other thing. The newsletter that went out tonight, people have been asking about the spiral card. I did a night angel video, I don't know, a week or 10 days ago, showing how to make this. And you pull from the center. And there's a secret note inside but I had lots and lots of people email me for directions so that I wrote a tutorial and it's in that newsletter. So if you are not a blog subscriber to stampingmom.com, I hope you'll become one. I put a free tutorial in each one. So this one is in the newsletter that went out tonight. And I must say, it's the first newsletter in a long time. We had to resurrect it, didn't we, Steve? Yeah, well, okay, to be honest, we had to relearn how to do it. <laughs> we figured it out. So for this card tonight, along with the detailed dogwood, I the sentiment says, hello there. That is from Nature's Prints. You definitely need the deckled circle to make this card. And then for the embossing folder, I use the Softly Sophisticated 3D this is um, another SAB item that's going away. It is paired with a stamp set. And on the card I'm gonna make tonight, I use these rainbow adhesive back dots, which are super cute. Okay, I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way and show you what we have here. I have all the pieces. Yeah, 
Pray for me. None of the pieces run away. I know they're all in this bag. <laughs> they can run, but they can't hide. Something like that, and they're even in order. Okay. So, Steve, you have measurements. I have measurements? Yep. I should actually show the measurements is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. How about five Yay. and a half by eight and a half? Bridget is here, stock. and Kimberly Barbish and Jeanne. Welcome, everyone. Okay. What Steve said, five and a half by eight and a half, Melon Mambo for this one. This one was Daffodil Delight. And go ahead and score it. The reason I do it this way is because I tried it the other way, and I found it hard. If you don't think it's hard to find the center of the circle, go ahead and do it that way. For me, it was easier to make the card base and score it. And then I ran it through the deckled circles. In fact, let me show you. It's the second largest deckled circle. And what I did is, you can see there's a tiny bit left on both sides. So I put the second largest in and just left it because you still want the card connected on the sides, right? Otherwise... It's two different pieces of paper. Yeah, well, and maybe that... Maybe that doesn't matter. It just needs to fit so your circle is complete. Okay. So then the next thing you need is the fourth largest deckled circle. And I will show you that too. What are people chatting about? Don't leave me out of the chatting, Steve. Things do hide. Yeah, especially in a craft room, Jean. I agree. So now you're going to get a piece of basic white cardstock and cut out the fourth largest deckled circle. And then cut this completely in half. If you put it on your trimmer, the furthest out part is approximately two and three eighths. But don't get that, don't get hung up on that. Just cut your circle in half. Then I took one half put it in the softly sophisticated embossing folder and ran it through. So that is what I have left, is the two pieces. So we're gonna adhere um, the embossed piece on the front. It kind of reminds me of the watermelon cards that we made not too long ago. You could make, doesn't this look, maybe we should make it green. Should we just switch it up in midstream, Steve? And make I, that would make it more <laughs> excited. I mean, okay, that might be stressful. So, um, I'm going to put the embossed piece on the outside. Look at that! You got glue going. You know, I was just on with my team, and I did not have glue going, so I made sure and got the right one over here. So, and as you can see, it's not. It's okay, you know what I mean? Just make it so the border is as close to even as what you can do. And then inside, I didn't stamp anything cute in here, but use your imagination and put something cute on the inside. What would you put? Tell me in the comments, what do you think should go on the inside of this card? Can I tell my first story? <laughs> so She's like, Stop talking, Beth. No, it's not Take that. a breath. I just thought, you know, while you're doing that. So we got to do lots of home improvement projects and organizing. Oh, it was with... nesting party weekend. Yes. And uh, one of the things I if, did. If you don't know, we're having a grandchild in about 34 days, approximately. In 17 minutes. No, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know when. But um, so one of my projects was they had a panel um, that went inside a cutout on their shelves that they wanted adhered to the side. So I had to use liquid nails on this great big panel. I had to put the liquid nails all over. So I asked for advice from an expert on gluing. I said, so should I go around the outside and then should I do some in the middle? And because she just whips these things out all the time, right? It's not even a, she didn't even think about it. So yeah, she gave me the diagram that I should <laughs> use my glue and it worked. It's still up that I know of, so there we so go. So should we talk about, when you guys do home improvement projects, how many Band-Aids do you need on your fingers when you're done? Okay, so to be clear, Steve has several Band-Aids, and I don't know if you can see this, but I, I have a major cut on my finger. 
that I'm afraid is getting infected. So I need to do something about that quick. So I went on to a different step. I didn't know how how long the story was going to be. So I caught up so, to you. Um, we fussy cut one and then okay. fussy cut okay. two biggest flowers. Well, I'll, from I'll go the other. back. I'll ba go back and tell you. So with Memento, the black Memento ink, I stamped the flower twice, and I fussy cut. When I'm saying one big flower, that's this whole thing, and then I did the two little flowers that are going to be popped up on top of that. And I used crumb cake for the stem. I used a melon mambo and a little flirty flamingo, daffodil delight, and some granny apple green. Should I move this up so you can see it? So this one is already colored, and then I started to work on this one. I put daffodil delight in the middle, and I liked how I did it on this one, and I tried to do the darker color around the edge here. And then I'm going to use the other blend to blend that color out. This is small enough that I'm going to do it to all the petals. And you know, we have so many home improvement project stories. If you don't mind, Steve, you can tell another one, but I'm going to do the dark melon mambo. And then I am, or actually not the dark, I use the light melon mambo. And then I'm going to go to the dark flirty flamingo and then the light flirty flamingo. So and our get this son and daughter in law out. live in a really, really cute old hundred, hundred year old house craftsman home in North Des Moines. And um, I'm not used to working in older homes. So tell them what's different about the walls. Well, first of all, they got two rooms remodeled in their basement with brand new wallboard and everything, but we were gonna hang shelves right in the closets that they had built and i was really worried about not wanting to mess up the walls brand new walls brand new paint um so you know we tried the hardest to you know as we could to be very delicate with these walls well then we get upstairs and they want to hang shelves upstairs in the old plaster walls right and even with the drill it is the hardest thing i've ever seen in my life trying to drill into this old plaster and so we used special anchors and we had to get them in there. That's how I cut my fingers. The anchors were like razor sharp. It's a cone that was razor sharp and you screwed them into the wall. Tell, tell them what Ryan said at one point. Ryan, so on I, didn't, I didn't notice that my fingers were bleeding because, you know, it was just so sharp. He's, he's a little intense, let's say. And uh, Ryan's like, Dad, um you're bleeding and I'm afraid you're going to get blood on the clothes in our closet. So could I put a bandaid on that? And I said, sure. So didn't you know. he also say you're sweating and you're bleeding and dad, are you okay? And I said, yeah, well, it's a home improvement project. That's what I do. You sweat, you bleed. You, you, I, I've been known to say a couple words that I usually don't say oh, if things aren't I'm going sure correctly. You didn't do that, did but you? I didn't. No, I didn't use any of what I call the home improvement words because I was with my son and daughter-in-law. I want to set a good example. So yeah, that was uh, it. Was very unusual to work in a house of that age because I'm not used to that. But we did get all the shelves hung. We got everything. We we also went into the ceiling so we could hang some planters. And uh, they look really, really cute. And that's what I'll say. Um, Beth and her sister and niece. Okay. So you guys, you know, we, we help because we're the parents, right? But my sister drove from Kansas City and my niece from Manhattan, Kansas. Ten hours round trip to come up here and work Friday night and Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon and well, night. They, I mean, it's, they are saints. Just they, like us, they really love Ryan and Brianne, and they're really excited for baby James. And they wanted to help Brianne get everything organized so she would feel good about it. And we got all done with everything, and Brianne had tears in her eyes. She was so happy. And uh, that was the goal, was yeah. to have her be very happy. So. But shout out to Lindsay and Janet. They're amazing absolutely amazing so okay. yeah home improvement so, projects yeah but life. it was really have you guys heard of a nesting party you get you help the new mom get ready either cooking meals or organizing getting out the baby clothes okay so for me it was more like i had a honeydew list except this time it was from my daughter-in-law instead of my my wife so yeah just do what you got to do 
Okay, so this doesn't look quite like I wanted it to. So we'll just pretend. Pretend this is really beautiful. Um, I usually take more time and I'm more careful. And what other excuses? Help me make some excuses, Steve. Um, we just <laughs> want to, to honor everybody's time commitments. That's it. I was honoring your time commitment. So I... I rushed through. through this. Yeah, yeah, I can color better than that. But here we go. We're back to the rocker card. We have things fussy cut. And we have them um, colored. So now I'm just going to pop this up on Stampin' Dimensionals. Make sure you always, when you're doing blends, do it with a sheet underneath. Now, I'm not going to put the blends where the flower and the stem is because it's cute. It hangs off the card. And if you look, this still fits in a normal envelope. And I can have the flower and the stem hanging off the top. So I'm going to start my dimensionals down here. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the chat. And also, someone tell Steve to tell me what you're talking about. Well, we just got asked if it was her first grandchild, so I replied and said yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, Barb backed me up, said it's not an official home improvement project unless there's blood involved. <laughs> so I feel better now. Okay. I told you not to put the dimensional up so high on this flower, and then I did it. So we're just going to move it down here. And then whatever you think looks good, put it on there. And then for these flowers, I'm just going to pop these up over the top. So there is lots of dimension to this card. And just match. We have a question about this. Is this? Uh, it is Daffodil Delight. Daffodil Delight. Okay, thank you. Daffodil Delight. So I made these cards mirror images of each other. This one is basically Melon Mamba with a little flirty flamingo added in. And the Granny Apple Green and the Crumb Cake stem. This is the same thing, but the Melon Mambo is in the centers. And the Daffodil Delight is on the edges. I left these white around here. When I photographed this, it looked really dark. Some of it matters, have you noticed this? how inked up your black memento is. So I almost like this one better that is less inked. And I did go into a little lemon lolly for this one. Okay. Now for the sentiments, I showed you this came from Nature's Prints. It is hello there. So I stamped that in Versamark and used white embossing powder. And we're just going to pop that up and put it on the card. Now I have a question for you. I couldn't decide. On this one, I used the in color. This is actually Sweet Sorbet, which is more of a red. But the ribbon's pink. Has anyone noticed that? Stampin' Up! does so good matching the embellishments to the paper to the ink. But I think this embellishment is off. To me, it's pink, not Sweet Sorbet. So I used it because I didn't have any Melon Mambo ribbon. So on here, I had the combo pack of Bubble Bath and Azure Afternoon and Lemon Lolly. So I could put that on here with the little silver. Can you see that? Do you like that better? Or I could go in the same family of ribbon as the first one, the in colors, and add the the green on there of the in colors. I have an opinion. What's your opinion, Steve? Uh, I think the yellow is too big, and I think the green one matches better. Okay, do you guys agree? Should I go with Steve? Is he a seasoned card maker making the right choice? I like to put on the ribbons with a little mini glue dot, and I've showed you this before. I know a lot of you have this, but I do use a bow maker to make my bows. And I'm going to put the glue dot where I want it between the stems. And we are doing prize patrol. We will do prize patrol after 
I tell you about Joy Club, so stick around. What do you think? Number one is Daffodil Delight. Number two is Melon Mambo. Oh, and the thing I didn't add yet is these rainbow adhesive dots. On this one, I used pearls and I colored them with a Melon Mambo marker. And I thought since I had lemon um, dots, not quite daffodil, but it's close enough. There's very little yellow on this. And I love these rainbow. You can use these for so many cards. I maybe should have opened them first. And we're just going to pop up a couple, a couple of these dots. I'm going to put one on the sentiment. A lot of times I use odd numbers. So I'm going to put one on the sentiment and two others spread around. So here's the Melon Mamba one with the, with the embellishments on there. Yay, did you guys vote for the same one with Steve? So Daffodil Delight is number one, Melon Mambo is number two. Okay, so Stamping Joy Club. I don't need glasses for this. Well, I guess until I read the thing. Every month we're going to do a, a Stampin' Chat Zoom call. Typically it's the first Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. We're also going to do an activity. Our activity for March has I've had people for years asking me to include them on this so now we get to do it we're making a sampler I'm going to show you examples of three samplers my team has done in the same way we're doing this everyone makes a three by three square and then when you get the samplers we're going to meet again April 3rd and put them together over zoom it will be so much fun so you make a three by three square. And the most important thing is that we all use the same colors and that you use lots of texture and lots of um, like scallops or like this. The more texture, what's the other word I'm looking for? Barb or Linda? Texture and dimension. We need texture and dimension on the squares. Here's another sample one we made for Easter. And as you can see, when you pick the colors, everyone can do their own thing and it just goes together very nicely. So you make nine of your square. You make nine. And you send them all into Beth and then she redistributes them back. You get your own back and eight others. And then on our Zoom call in April, we will together put them together. So. They're three by three squares. The squares on here are three and a quarter, and I'll show you why. So here's another example. But again, you can you can do ribbon if it's it's. I'm sorry to be picky. Like we're not picky about it. Can be retired. It doesn't have to be current. Stampin' Up or anything like that. But the colors are important because if it coordinates, you can make almost anything, and you're gonna love your sampler. So I will show you the colors. A couple of my team members came over and we, we had to start out, oops, there goes the camera. We had to start out bright and happy because I, I love making bright and happy cards. So here's our colors for the first sampler. It's Melon Mambo, Gorgeous Grape, Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, Tahitian Tide, and Grand Apple Green. And you don't have to use every color, but you can only use these colors you can use black ink on your stamps or white embossing, and you can use basic white cardstock, okay? But that is the key to have this turn out is it has to be these colors. If you don't have the colors, I'll send you the colors in the mail because um, you do need to use the colors. So you make nine three by three squares, you get nine back. I'm gonna show you um, a couple. Okay, I made mine already. I made this with the paper florist dies. Um, they're on dimensionals. This is the layering squares that's retired. I use that a lot because it looks really good on the sampler. So if you have the layering or the circles, 
that have scallops. That looks really good on this. The next layer is um, the Basics embossing folder that's an online exclusive. And then the flower is popped up, the centers are popped up. There's texture on the leaves and on the centers they're stitching. Now, when you get this to put it together, you can pick what, this is three by, th or three by three, you can put it on Melon Mambo, three and a quarter by three and a quarter, or you can put it on Gorgeous Grape. It depends on how you're putting it together. Maybe this is too much detail. He's shaking his head. On some of these, like on this one, I, I did different colors based on the colors of the squares. Down. Put it down. Down and okay. move it around because you can't see the whole thing on the screen. Okay, on this one, sometimes I put DSP on the back, but not DSP on the squares. On this one, I put yellow. I backed every square with yellow except the center one, but we'll go over all that when we put them together. And I have over a dozen of these. Okay, here's another square that another teammate made. Jean made this. She used the Everyday Details stamp set. This is in the mini catalog, that little um, teacup. She did it in white embossing, and then she used the new die in the um, mini catalog also, and then a cane weave embossing folder. She popped up the flower and colored the pearl. So on that one, if it works out with the other squares, I would probably put that on Gorgeous Grape. So as you can see, here's just two squares and they it just goes together really awesome. So that's just one of the things. We also, um, in April, later in April, we're playing bingo. And, okay, do you wanna hear, do you wanna hear about Stamping Joy Club? What parts of this should I tell them? Well, it's first on, of all, so that you know, it is on a special hosting service called Mighty Networks, um, and we purchased that, subscribed to it, because we wanted it not to be on Facebook. It's just like Facebook, and you can do all the things that you can, but there's no algorithm messing with what can be done and what can't be done. And, um, and you get a free app for your phone. Yes. So it makes it very easy. You also have Steve and I. Um, there's going to be a moment of learning curve as you get on to see where everything is and we have a list of tips and after you go through those tips then you contact us and we will help you individually get on and you're going to love it you guys. It's, it's going to be an amazing thing. It grows over time. There's um, written tutorials, there's video tutorials, there's tutorial bundles, there's the community of meeting each other, giving each other ideas. There's weekly challenges. There's um, there's friends, you know. There's a lot of people who don't have an upline or a sideline or any kind of team. We are your team and you're gonna, you're gonna love this. We're gonna love this and we have fun. So if you're the kind of person that is positive and wants to be with a group of people just spreading joy with all our creations and having so much fun, then you want to come. Do you want to give them more details, Steve? Sure. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to let you actually see the site and uh, so you can see what it looks like. And um, let me find the site and see what it's actually going to look like. And then... Should I keep talking? Oh, there it is. There's the prices. So, should we talk about that? Yes. So, it is $25 a month. If you sign up for a year, you get two months for free, and it's $250. I will tell you, um, just with the sampler alone, to take the class to do it would be at least $25. And I've sold many of the samplers for at least $25. So that alone, um, the tutorials, I sell dozens of tutorials every month. You get tutorials for free when you're in my club. It just goes on and on and on. I promise you the value is far greater than $25. And if you sign up for a year, 
The people who sign up for the annual membership between now and March 31st will be in a drawing. And I have two different bundles, one from the mini catalog and one from the annual catalog. I'll do a drawing and you have the possibility of winning a free bundle. Four is a way for us to thank you for signing up for the annual membership. What else, Steve? I'm going to share the actual Joy Club now so people can see it. And let us know what questions you have, too, although I, I don't know if either one of us can see questions right now. Can you see them? Okay, so this is the actual Stamping Joy Club. This is your welcome page. Um, here's what um, Beth was talking about. She's got some surprises on there for you. Oh, wait, don't show some them that. Some freebies for the moment you get on there. You've got a, a get help from us. From It gives you our contact information on the bottom, so you can talk to us anytime. And it shows you what the different areas are. Here is one of the very best parts, and that is the community pages. It's like Facebook walls where you can post your own cards. Beth has got questions posted to get people to comment. You can see a lot of people already have commented. Um, people are posting their own cards that they've made and other people are commenting on those. Um, okay, this is, this is Bentley. Do you guys remember, show, uh, move him up a little bit, the tool um, card that I made last week? This is um, his and his grandma Jude's version. Isn't he sweet? When that showed up, I just, oh, it warms my heart. So Jude is He's already so on the cute. site and she posted this and everybody started commenting on it. So you can see, this is the community where everybody gets to interact so um, the other things that we have on there, there's a weekly card challenge. So this is the this is the challenge for this week that Beth put out there. The hidden paper clip. So Barb, and I'm gonna attach a video showing you how to do this. Barb Kingsley made her first video, and this is her write up on how to do a hidden paper clip, and then her video will be on there too. So you can go on and find out how to do it. So we also have a prayer wall because we want everybody in this community to take care of each other and care for each other. So um, it's a place you can go, if you choose to, um, to ask for prayer requests or pray for other people. Um, so here is the, the real valuable stuff. So these are all... And, and this is the beginning. It's going to grow every week, every month. Here, so. These are single card tutorials, and you can see Beth has them organized by different types. To make it really I, I, yeah. easy to find I them. I want to make it so easy. When you want to make a certain card, you're going to be able to go there and find it. So the the real value here is... You the keep saying that with every, multiple with every card category. Tutorials. The real value here so, is this and that. You know, here you have yeah. a tutorial that's got between Honestly, 10 and 50 cards. Honestly, some of these tutorial cards. bundles, it was, it's right now of the bundles, I think they're $75 worth on there right now. So, And then, of course we have videos and on how to make cards. And again, they're, they're in the same categories so that you can find them. Yeah. And the idea is, it, you know, when you need an idea and inspiration, we wanted this to be a really easy place where you could find what you're looking for and be ready to go. Okay. And so, the last thing we should talk about, Beth, is... Oh, the, the events. So um, the first event is a week from tomorrow night. It's a monthly craft and chat. We'll make a project, craft together, and chat. It's going to be super fun. That's typically the first Wednesday of the month at 7. Um, the 3x3 three three squares for your sampler, they're due at my house March 25th. Then we, um, on April 3rd, we're meeting to put the samplers together. And we're doing bingo on... April 24th. It's a Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And like I said, it's this is your community. Whatever ideas you have, we'll add those. It's it's a positive, fun, happy place. And I really hope that you care our heart on this and that you would like to join us. So how can, do you join, Steve? Well, you, you go to www.stampingjoyclub.com. You can join for a month and try it out. And, or if you want to be in the drawing for the... There's two different stamp bundles. One is a punch bundle and one is a die bundle. And there'll be a drawing from everyone who joins with the annual membership by March 31st. So there you go. So 
If you know you want to join, you can let us know in the comments. We are excited to have you. It's going to be super fun. So should we do price patrol? Thank you for hanging on and listening to all that. And bingo. Bingo is going to be super fun, too. So. Okay. So I hope everybody has already um, signed up for prize patrol. prize patrol by putting hashtag prize patrol in your uh, comments. And let me get that displayed and we'll do our drawing. A lot of people have been choosing which card they, they like. That's Thank good. you, you guys. We love spending time with you and we're excited to spend more time with you on Zoom. You get to talk too. You don't just have to type. Yep. So that will be amazing. Okay, here we go. And the winner is... Bridget. Bridget. Yay. Okay, so let me know if you want number one, the daffodil, or number two, the mambo, and I will get that in the mail to you. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Any questions that you have about anything or Joy Club, my email is beth at stampingmom.com. And I hope you have a wonderful week and please reach out to us because we are here to help you. And um, I can't wait to see everybody on the inside. It's going to be fun. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.